All right then, so for the rest of this series, we're going to be building our own mini CSS library like Bootstrap or Tailwind or Bulma or something else. And it is going to be a mini version, a very simplified version of one of these. And then we're just going to use that CSS library to design some kind of web page later on. So to begin with, I just want to set up a decent project structure so that we don't have SAS code or SAS files flying around everywhere. And instead, they're organized in a nice way that's going to make updating our project really easy. So to do this, we'll create a folder first of all to keep all of our SAS files inside and I'm going to call the folder Shinobi because that's what I'm going to call the CSS library that we're making. Shinobi CSS sounds kind of cool right? So now we can move our two SAS files into this folder the variables one and the index one and any other partials we create in the future are going to go in here as well. Now to begin with in the index file, I want to delete a lot of this dummy code that we created earlier on using those variables. That's not going to be a part of our library. So let's delete all of those. And then the rest of this stuff at the top, this reset stuff, I want to extract all of that into a new partial file as well, just so we're organizing our code in a nice modular way. So first of all, let me create a new partial file inside the Shinobi folder called underscore and then base.scss and then I'm going to copy all of the base styles including the font import at the top and I'm going to paste all of that into the base file. All right then so now we need to import this base file into our index file because the index file is the one that's ultimately being compiled and bringing everything together. We already import the variables one so now let's import the base one. So Underneath the variables down here, I'm going to do at import and then base. All right then, so now we've changed the structure of our SAS files a little bit. They're now living inside this folder. What we need to do is go to our gulp file and just update where the source files are going to be. Because at the minute, this is just looking at the top level for any file name with a SAS extension. So we need to update this now to tell it to look inside the Shinobi folder first of all. So I'm going to say look inside Shinobi like this and then forward slash and then I'll do double asterisk and then forward slash asterisk. So what's this? Well, this right here means any subfolder as well. So it's going to find any SAS file or any subfolder with a SAS file inside this folder and it will compile that. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. Let me copy that and paste it down here. So we're watching any SAS file inside here as well. And remember, it's not going to compile all of those to different CSS files because we're using this underscore right here, which marks this as a partial. And it says to the compiler, look, don't compile me. We're just using this in another file. All right. So that's now going to all work. We need to also open up the terminal, cancel out of the process because we're using the old one now and then run gulp again so we can run again watching that particular folder. All right, so that's all set up now. Now I wanna talk about one more thing and that is the order of import in this file because the order of import right here does matter because different files might depend on code previously created in other files. For example, if inside this base file right here, we create a selector. So I'm gonna say dot test and then inside here, give it a color, which is gonna be a variable which we declare inside the variables file. I'm going to call it primary, or rather it's already called primary. I'm just using that variable right here. This is allowed because base is below variables in the import order. So that means anything declared up here has been pulled in first of all, and therefore by the time it gets to the base file, it knows what those variables are and we can use them. So if we take a look at the output CSS, because this will have compiled, then we can see we get that test selector with the primary color. However, if I was to change the order of these so that base came first, then this is not going to work. And if I save it now and open up the terminal, we can see we get an error which says that we can't read basically the primary variable. It's undefined. And that's because the SAS compiler is working top to bottom in this file. It runs through all of the base file first of all, gets to this primary color and says, hang on, what's going on here? I don't know what this primary variable is. So I'm going to give you this error down here and it's not going to compile for us. So the order does matter. If a file depends on a value declared in another file, then it must be below the file it depends on. Okay, so I'm going to grab the base again and bring it down here. 
All right then, so what I'm gonna do is just mark in a few comments in this file so that in the future, when we start to add other partials, we know where they're meant to go and we're not gonna get confused about the order of imports. So let me first of all at the top say, this is gonna be for variables and also functions. We don't know what functions are in SAS yet, but they're basically like functions in programming and other files might use them. So they're gonna go at the top later as well. All right, so after that, we're gonna have all of the kind of base layout stuff. So base and layout, because these are reset styles, right? So they're very kind of top level styles and the layout as well is gonna be things like the grid system. So that's gonna come second. All right, so after that, it's gonna be the colors. So things we do with colors to generate classes like for backgrounds or text colors, they're all gonna use variables and maybe a function. So they have to come down below. And then after that, it's gonna be components. Let me give a little more space here. We'll say components. And that's gonna be for things like the button component or the card component or the nav bar, etc. Now, all of these things are probably gonna use the variables and functions as well. Maybe something else. Either way, they're gonna come fairly near the bottom, but at the very bottom, let me close this, is gonna be the utilities. So let me do utilities right here. And that's gonna be for things like the margin classes, the padding classes, opacity, etc. So all of those are gonna be at the bottom because again, they'll probably depend on variables and functions. Now, the order of these kind of things right here, maybe it might be that these could go above the colors or these could go above components. That might not matter so much. The main ones is that the variables and the functions that a lot of the other files are gonna go at the top, but we'll just stick to this kind of general import order here as we make more files in the future.